messages, but the title tonight is Possible or Impossible? And uh, some things that I noticed in, in this portion of Scripture. With our Wednesday night uh, program that we're, we're using, uh, we're encouraging folks to memorize the, 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 each week we have a memory verse. And uh, our memory verse this last time was Romans 15, 4. See if I can say it. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, uh, that, is it we? Let's see here. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Well, I, I generally try to learn these while I'm putting out pamphlets. Uh, so I, I take an hour or two or whatever, and uh, you, you can say a verse a lot of times in an hour or two. And uh, I've found that the rhythm of you know, walking helps, but it also, after a while, you, you start thinking about the words, and you think about the, 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 the thoughts in it. And in, in thinking about this, this portion of Scripture, Romans 15, 4, just, just that one verse is a real blessing. You, you know, there's, there's a lot in just that one verse. Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. There's a lot there. Then I began to think about the, the context, you know, where it's, where it's found. And, and I found it really interesting that Romans chapter 14 and 15, God is talking to Christians about getting along with each other. You know, it's, it's one thing to get along with family and, you know, get along with your enemies and, you know, so on. But uh, as Christians, we need to have fellowship. We need to have unity. We need to get along. And uh, Romans chapter 14, for instance, verse 1 says, Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. So he talks for a while there about receiving one another with understanding. Yeah, we can put up with just about anything, but we don't have to um, let people teach false doctrine and, you know, that kind of thing. Then he, he goes on in Romans uh, 14, verse 13. He says, Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Yeah, the thing we need to be careful of is we don't cause somebody else to have a problem. Uh, verse 19, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Edify means to build up. Uh, so he talks about building uh, each other up without offending each other. Well, then we get to, to the portion here in Romans 15. And basically he's saying uh, we need to please one another with Christ as our example. And then later in, in chapter 15, he talks about rejoicing together. Uh, we need to be able to rejoice together. Uh, chapter 15, verse 10 Again, he saith, Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. Now, one of my favorite verses is Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, that's an encouraging verse. It's great to, to stop and think about it. Well, let's read our text tonight, Romans 15, starting in verse 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us, to the glory of God. You see the context there of, of verse 4? It's almost like it's a little diamond set in a ring of gold. You, know? you think, oh, that's different than the rest of the, of, of the portion, but, but it all fits together. Uh, God's call is for us to unity, and I'm... I was interested to see how he relates unity and hope. You know, the, the unity we have in the Lord together as Christians is part of our hope. Um, I guess we don't have the, the screen available, but uh, that's all right. I've got a few verses. Let me just, uh, so we do. All right, well, this is modern technology. You all know this verse. <laughs> Sorry. Wouldn't be smart, Alex, should I? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Uh, just give you a few verses here that uh, talk about this thing of unity. 
Um, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Pretty, pretty plain what he's saying. 1 Corinthians 12, uh, verse 12. Some of these I have the whole verse, some, some of them I just have portions. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. We're, we're one in Christ is what he's saying. Galatians 3, verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And then Ephesians 4, uh, I've only typed out a, a part of this, but he, he starts in, in verse 2 and he says, With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And God calls us to unity as, as Christians. Uh, Philippians 1, verse uh, 27. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. Conversation in King James is talking about your manner of life. The way you live, be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Unity in Christ. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 11 where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And then uh, uh, verse 14, above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. One other portion is from uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 and uh, verses 8 and 9. Finally be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. I just wanted you to see that this is, this is not just a minor theme in, in Scripture. Now, over and over, just about every book he repeats uh, that uh, there needs to be unity amongst us as, as a church, as, as Christians, and that unity is only possible as we each conform ourselves to Christ. See, if, if we were to have unity because you were all conformed to me, we could be really warped. <laughs> or if we were all conformed to you, uh, you know, we might be really you know, off the beam. But if we're all conformed to Christ, that's the kind of unity we want. See, there are people in the world who have unity, but it's the wrong kind. They're all out to kill us or, you know, whatever. When you tune a piano, you don't tune it to itself. You get, it used to be the key, A, 440 whatever they are, and you tune the whole piano to that one note. That way the whole piano is in tune. And that's the way it is for us as Christians. We tune ourselves to Christ. And if you and I have a problem, we need to stop and think, well, not what's his problem. <laughs> what's my problem with Christ? Why am I not like Christ in this? Uh, unity helps our hope. And I want us to, to look at that. The, the thing I've noticed lately, and maybe this is more common now than it used to be, some, some people, the way they solve the problem of disunity is they disengage. Now, by that I mean they say, oh, we're having too many troubles, I'm out of here. And instead of working at unity, they, they feel like they have unity because they're all on their own. <laughs> yeah, I'm finding more and more people aren't, parts of, uh, aren't a part of a church or aren't part of, uh, of what the Lord is doing. And you, you, they might think, well, I have no problems. Well, I mean, you, you live in a cave, you, well, you probably would have problems. <laughs> you wouldn't have problems with people. Uh, but the, the way to solve this, this, when we have problems with disunity, is not to move away from Christians. It's to move closer to Christ and to see, well, you know, what is it that the Lord needs me to change? In, in Romans chapter 15 there, that's the main portion we're looking at, he gives us six spiritual motives for unity in a church. And, and let's look at them one, one by one. The first two are in verses 1 and 2. They're kind of the opposites of each other. And uh, the first one is consideration for others. Now, you would think that would be a pretty basic Christian concept, wouldn't you? 
Uh, we, the Wees and us, went out for lunch up at Mount Kuta this afternoon, and it was really crowded, and we had to grab a table. I felt very unchristian. <laughs> I jumped in in front of these two ladies. I'm sorry, we've got these, these tables. I did point out a, a table for them, but anyway. Uh, consideration for others. It, it should just be the norm, shouldn't it, uh, as Christians? Uh, what he says, the words are, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. And I found it interesting, as you look at the words, that word ought in uh, verse 1, ought to bear the infirmities. If you look that up, that has to do with debt. This is not just, oh, yeah, maybe you should do this. No, this is, this is a debt we owe. <laughs> God says that's part of the Christian life, and we'll, we'll relate to that more as we go on, but basically he says, it's kind of like the concept, pay it on. Christ paid it to you, now it's time for you to pay it on. You, be, you consider others. Um, it's like what he says in Romans 1, verse 14, when he says, I am debtor, both to the Greeks, and, and his debt is to share the gospel. You know, somebody shared it with him, he says, now it's my debt, I've got I've to pay it on. Um, and this thing of consideration for others, stop and think about this. We all use this bank. We all want others to show consideration to us. And we've all had times when we might not have survived if somebody hadn't shown consideration to us. Well, now it's time to pay it on. Uh, we, we have this debt. You know, we ask for loans from this bank all the time. Well, now it's time to pay it back. And you pay it back by showing consideration to others. It's a very, very Christian concept, isn't it? Uh, it's interesting to look at the words weak and strong. That, that's where I got the title for the message. Weak and strong relate to impossible and possible. I've never seen this before. I've mentioned this to some of you. If you're interested in the, the words and, and what they mean, I use a, a, a site called Blue Letter Bible. Blue Letter Bible. And uh, you, can, you can get in on the King James, you can put in Strong's, that's a commentary, and it'll tell you what each word means and show you everywhere in the Bible where that word is. It's really fascinating. Anyway, uh, the word impossible, uh, I'm sorry, the word weak has to do with impossible. And it's people who in, in thinking about God and thinking about life just don't see what God can do. You know, they, they've got a relationship problem. They've got a, a, a situation. They say, oh, it's impossible. Can't do it. Can't be done. And the, the Bible indicates, and, and we understand from Scripture, it's a problem of unbelief. It's one of the things we've been learning on Wednesday nights. Most of the problems we have, we have to diff, deal with. The reason we have those problems is because of unbelief. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 19, 26, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And I found it, this is what started me thinking about this. That word impossible is the exact same Greek word as the word weak in Romans 15. Impossible, weak. <laughs> and as Christians, sometimes we look at things in life with ah, impossible. Well, why? Because we're not looking at it with God's strength in mind. Now, be careful with that word things. When he says, all, with God, all things are possible, there's some things that are, that are not God's things. All right? God's not going to help you rob the bank. God's not going to help you divorce your wife. Okay? Those are not God's things. So don't, don't apply this in a, in a foolish way. Uh, but he says, uh, as Christians, we need to be careful that we're not leaving God out of our life. Uh, in uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 3, again, it's exactly the same word. Romans 8, verse 3, but they translated, they used a different English words. He says, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Now, you think that word weak would be the same word, but the, the same word as the word weak in Romans 15 are the words could not do. What the law could not do. The way the law was weak, the way it was impossible for the law, he says, is through the flesh. And that's what we're talking about here. Uh, you know, for us uh, to do what God wants us to do, we, we've got to look to Him for the strength to do it. And, and that word strong has to do with what's possible. 
Well, he said in, in Matthew 19 there, with God, all things are possible. And, you know, at some point, we all need help. And we need to be careful that we're not hard on others when they need help and gracious to ourselves when we need help. Uh, Galatians 6, he says, If a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Uh, you might need to come to this bank of consideration soon. <laughs> uh, be careful. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Uh, you know, at some point, we all, all need help. Uh, so he's talking here in, in uh, Romans 15 about uh, bearing infirmities. You know, when other people are unbelieving, when they're, they're weak towards the Lord, uh, we need to help them. Uh, he talks in verse 2 about edification, building them up in the faith, helping them to see what is possible with God. One of the things you do when you counsel people scripturally, one of the first things you do is show them there is hope. There is hope. There is a solution. God can help you. So, number one, uh, part of unity is consideration for others. And we won't spend as much time on each one as, as that. Number two is the other side of the coin, disregard for self. One of the main reasons we have interpersonal problems is because we're so concerned about ourself. <laughs> you know, if, if we really didn't care about ourself, uh, you know, nobody could offend us. But because we do care about ourselves, we, we get offended. Our, our son, I couldn't, I couldn't remember if it was a t-shirt or a coffee cup. Some of you will know. He has a t-shirt or a coffee cup that says, Death to Self. He said he gets some real strange looks when, <laughs> when he wears that or drinks from it, whatever it is. Death to Self. Uh, here, here in this verse, verse 1, not to please ourselves. Not to please ourselves. A disregard for self will help us to have unity with others. In uh, Philippians chapter 2, he gives a little bit of the testimony of Timothy, a godly young man. And uh, he says of him, I, I trust in the Lord Jesus, Philippians 2.19, to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. But you know the proof of him. He says, I can send Timothy because he, he's not just out, out for himself. He's not just in it for what he can get out of it. I can send Timothy because he'll, he'll care about you. He, he has a, a godly disregard for self. Uh, in our lessons on Wednesday night, I think it was this last one, uh, he talked about preaching to yourself. I think the phrase was, we need to quit listening to ourselves and, and start talking to ourselves. <laughs> yeah, you can get, get a hold of that later. But uh, he said, we need to preach to ourselves sometimes. You know, question yourself, defy yourself. <laughs> and the, the psalm he used was where the psalmist said, why art thou cast down? Hope thou in God. You know, he was preaching to himself. And uh, we need to do that. Uh, don't please yourself. He does say, uh, please your neighbor. I, if you're offended, the common thing is to think about how they offended you, how they should change, when the real person we need to be concerned with is ourself and why I would be so offended and what I need to change. Listen, I can't change them, but I can change me by God's grace. So, uh, a couple of things that will help us with unity. One is consideration for others. The other is disregard for self. Now, that's hard. The third thing there in verse 3 is conformity to Christ. For even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. You've read the Gospels, how Jesus said, you know, Lord, if you, God, if you'll take this from me, but not as I will, but your will, and, and so on. Um, Christ is our example. We often sing and talk about being like Jesus, but do we really mean it? You know, Christ was willing to, uh, to humble himself. He, he said in John chapter 4, in verse 34, he said, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. He said, what, what I live for is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Uh, he was... Uh, willing to submit himself uh, to whatever needed to be done for our salvation. You know, sometimes as, as individuals, we, we 
reject others as unworthy or harmful, and you know, we separate ourselves and so on. And sometimes we forget how Jesus received us. That's what he's saying here. Um, even as Christ pleased not himself. Jesus received us different than anything you or I could know or do. Jesus knows our sin. You, know, you meet me, I meet you, we think, oh, that's a pleasant fellow, or, you know, nice guy, or what, whatever, lovely lady. Uh, but Jesus knows exactly who we are. He knows our, our thoughts, he knows our actions, he knows our past, he knows our future. Um, and in spite of our sin and knowing our sin, he receives us. God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, Paul's testimony in 1 Timothy 1 was, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Christ received us in spite of our sin. Christ receives us gladly. Uh, Luke chapter 15, the, um, the Pharisees were giving Jesus a hard time because, well, let me read it. The Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. They criticized him for having something to do with sinners. Well, you know what the Bible says? All have sinned. <laughs> That's all of us. So he was willing to do that with them too, they, but they didn't like to identify themselves that way. Uh, and the, Jesus then gives them three parables. The parable of the lost uh, coin, I think is the first one. No, the, the, the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son. And each one, they, they find what they've lost and there's rejoicing. And that's God's attitude toward you. God knows who you are. God knows what a dirty, rotten sinner I am and you are. But he, he loves us, and he wants to receive us. And uh, he rejoices when we, when we come to him. And he does that impartially. Several times the Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't favor one person above another. In John 6, he says, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Now, there's no one who can come to the Lord who will say, no, oh, no, got enough people like you. <laughs> no, uh, he, he receives us. And what a blessing that is. Uh, I love how God puts it in uh, Romans 3.22. Most people know Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the verse before it talks about how uh, faith in Jesus is unto all and upon all them that believe. God offers a relationship to, to everybody, and if we just believe him, it's upon us. Uh, what a blessing. And we need to remember that when we're having trouble with another person. Remember how the Lord received you, and don't be so hard on others. And it's interesting how when God talks about hope, he talks about unity. And if we're having, a trouble, if we're having trouble with unity... I think we're going to have trouble with hope, too, as a Christian. People who aren't Christians don't have hope. But God gives us the, the motivations here of, one, consideration of others, of disregard for self, of being like Jesus. And then fourthly there in, in Romans 15, 4, this is where I started, submission to Scripture. If you'll submit to Scripture and I'll submit to Scripture... Well, it doesn't mean we'll always agree about it, every word and, and everything, but it'll go a long way toward us having unity because we'll be listening to what God has to say. Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have, have hope. And I think I can say uh, we ignore God's Word to our peril. He, he says in 1 Corinthians 10, See here, make sure you get this right. Chapter 10, verse 11. All these things happen unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. And then the next verse says, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Listen, if you think you can stand without God's word, you're just heading for a fall. A submission to Scripture. And the Bible teaches us here, he says, patience, endurance. It'll help us to endure if we'll live by God's word. 
Uh, his word offers us comfort, uh, consolation. It's the word periclesis. Now, I don't know Greek, but I, I can read commentaries. Uh, it has to do with coming alongside. It's sometimes translated exhortation. And it's talking about somebody coming alongside and exhorting someone, encouraging them. It made me think of, I don't know why, why this came up in my mind, but uh, sometimes you'll, you'll pick up a little child and they don't want to be picked up. Well, when our son Philip was a toddler, uh, very strong-minded, and, and there'd be times when he, he just didn't want to draw close to his dad. He didn't want to do what dad or mom wanted him to do. I remember one time we were I had my wife drive home from church, and I held my son, and he was stiff as a board. He didn't want to be held, you know? And so I very graciously held him with all my might, <laughs> and I bent him to sit with me. If I hadn't physically bent his body, he would have been like this, you know? He's only about that long, but... And eventually he... He relaxed, and, and we, we got along. It, it made me think, that's a lot of times the way we are with God. God comes alongside us with his word, and, and we say, oh, I'm not doing that. I'm not listening to that. And God very graciously works with us and humbles us and helps us and, and so on. Uh, we need to submit ourselves to Scripture. We need to relax into the Lord and uh, let him uh, show us what the truth is and, and live the truth. And God adds to that, in verse 13, the Holy Spirit. Not only His Word, but His Holy Spirit to help us understand. Uh, verse 13, He says, uh, The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So we can have unity as we submit uh, to Scripture. He's the, he's the God of patience. He's the God of consolation. He's the God of hope. And that leads us to the next point there in verse 5. We need to depend on God's power. Now, the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. It's God who will help us to do that. It's God's power that will help us. You know, like we read in Matthew 19, uh, you know, with man, that might be impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Uh, we can do it. Uh, unity will help our hope. And these motives for unity uh, are what God says will... Uh, will help us. Our part is, is just to pray and, and to, to believe God's word. In Philippians, he says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Uh, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Uh, in Proverbs, one of the songs we sing, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not unto thine own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Uh, God can help us. Dependence on God's power. And then the last one, verse 6, Desiring to glorify God, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us, to the glory of God. You know, Christ, if you're a Christian, Christ received you to the glory of God. You know, it, it wasn't just, just for you. It was for the glory of God. In Ephesians, he says... Um, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. God saves us for, for his glory. And uh, we need to realize that as uh, receive one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. And that, that portion I was reading there in, in Ephesians, the next verse says, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And the question would come to my mind, have you trusted the gospel of your salvation? Listen, there's only one gospel. <laughs> uh, the gospel of your salvation is the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, that Christ died and was buried and rose again. Uh, have you trusted him, uh, Jesus Christ? Uh, if not, you need to receive him. And then if you have, receive others to the glory of God. That's what he's saying there in Romans 15, 7. In your weakness, trust the Lord. You know, that word strong, we then that are strong, that means we've understood what's possible in the Lord. With God, all things are possible. Uh, our hope is found in God's Word, he talks about here. Uh, our hope is in the Lord. And someday we'll be with Him, we'll be like Him. The, the Bible calls that the blessed hope. 
We're looking forward to, to that. But if your hope is in something that you can lose, you don't really have hope. You can label it that, you can call it that if you want, but it's not really hope if you can lose it. That's, that's not what the Bible is talking about. If your hope is in the Lord, you can never lose it. God's made you the promise he'll never leave you or for, forsake you. And you can share it with others. In fact, he, when he talked to the Thessalonians, he, he said, you don't have to sorrow like others who have no hope. He says, you can, you can look forward to, uh, to when you die to be with the Lord. And he says, you can comfort each other with these words. And what a blessing it is uh, to have our hope in the Lord. And in Romans 15, 1, let me just recap and, and we'll be done. He says, verse 1, we then that are strong. He's saying, those who see what's possible in the Lord ought, we have a debt, to bear the infirmities of the weak. Those who don't see what's possible. Or maybe they've just lost sight of what's possible. That happens sometimes. And he closes that verse with, and not to please ourselves. Well, that's a strong verse, isn't it? And uh, God is the one who, who wants us to have hope. And he says part of that is our unity with each other. And that unity all comes back to this, this thing of knowing the Lord, believing his word, and, and living for his glory. Now, maybe tonight you need to be saved. Maybe you've never had a time when you've, you've trusted uh, in, uh, in the gospel. If you are saved, you need to love others. You need to have a relationship with the people God puts in your life. You need to be a part of a church, but uh, there'll, there'll be plenty of people that God will put in your life uh, other than just a church. But uh, we need to be right with God and uh, to have that hope that he gives and that can only come from him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this evening and uh, with our heads bowed and in an attitude of prayer. Maybe the Lord is, is speaking to your heart. Uh, maybe there's something that's come up in this message tonight that God would have you to do business with him. And as we pray, uh, you take care of that with the Lord. Father, thank you so much for uh, these verses, for your word. Help us, Lord, to know you. I pray if, if there are those here tonight that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would uh, draw them to yourself, help them to, to see their own sin, and uh, Lord, to turn to you as the Savior. Father, I pray that uh, we would have love for each other because of your love for us. And uh, Lord, help us not to be selfish, but to be uh, considerate of your will and your people. Thank you, Father, for uh, this time tonight and the way you speak to our hearts. <clears throat> Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.